we will be monitoring the conduct of the parties. And in terms of having a tribunal, we are also ensuring that if there is any sort of concerns or any feeling that any injustice is being done, that the, there will be a tribunal to whom uh, um, appeal can be made. So that the decisions of the elect election monitoring tribunal are really final. After we complete our investigations and we hear the matter, then they are final. Save and accept that decisions relating to disciplinary matters will be subject to a hearing by a disciplinary committee. And decisions of that disciplinary committee relating to disqualification or removal from office will be subject to further appeal to the executive committee of the party. We have introduced campaign financing rules. It's like a kind of dry run for what we will have to do in the future. And so we have put a limit on spending. We'll be requiring reporting after the election is completed. And for this reason, because the returns are to be made 30 days after the election, for this reason, the election tribunal will have um, a lifespan of 60 days after the election will be held. Attorney at law and uh, opposition senator Donna Scott Motley, and a first class citizen, if you ask me, talking there about the PNP's election tribunal to monitor uh, the vice president's race and uh, speaking about the party's flirtation with campaign financing. It's a dry run, as she said, for what the party is likely to have to deal with at the next general election. So we come to the issue of the VP race, uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. General Secretary. And, uh, you know, I spoke to two of these six candidates before you came, well, not necessarily today, this mm -hmm. week, mm -hmm. and I asked them about the race and how things were shaping up, and they said, well, I told them that I was looking, working to get you to come here, and they said, mm -hmm. well, with all that has been said by the party, you still would find it useful, George, to ask the general secretary about the real issue of voter intimidation come September 15, and the issue of persons perhaps getting their hands on ballots printed before the polling stations open. Well, I mean, let me, I mean, let me address. Funny, two, two persons. Sure, well, I, I can that. address it. Yes. And I, you, you mentioned my, how long I was a deputy general secretary. Yes. I was involved in the 2006 presidential election at Jamaica College, where four persons ran. Yes. I was involved in the 2008 presidential election um, at the national. Um, Stadium, uh, Porsche Peter. I've been involved in all the major national elections from 2006 to now. We have never had an issue with issues with ballots. The EOJ is actually going to be running the election on the day. Mm. We are working closely with them. They're, so the presiding officers are going to be EOJ. Each candidate will have an indoor agent. So you're going to have a table with an EOJ presiding officer and a poll clerk. Every candidate will have an indoor agent. Where the stations are, like a constituent, let's say Southeast St. Andrew, for example, may have 93 delegates. Yes. The presiding officer will count out his or her ballots at the beginning in front of the six candidates. A person comes, they have, there are three checks to determine whether you're on the list. We have a screening area where you present your ID, Julian Robinson will take you. Mm -hmm. You then go to the registration area, which will be a set of tents outside the arena. Mm -hmm. We again check your ID, you are given a card. Mm -hmm. You then go into the arena, where again you're going to be checked and your ID checked. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be very difficult for anybody who is not a legitimate yes. delegate to participate. And then you vote, and then you leave the arena. Mm -hmm. The issue of somebody coming with ballots is not going to be possible because you are given a ballot when you, the, I'm not going to even see the ballot before. Nobody will see yes. it. On the day, the ballots are issued to the elector. The person does his or her marking in secret because we're going to have the, um, the cardboard stand, which you do it in secret. Yes. You drop it in the thing in front of everybody. It's going to be a very open process, as is done in a national election. The issue of intimidation, um, it, it has come up in the past, but again, once delegates come into the arena, I can't control everything that may happen outside of the arena, mm -hmm. but once you come into the stadium complex, I'm meeting with the police today to ensure that adequate arrangements are in place. Yes. We will have our own internal security. So I don't anticipate that any of those things would be issues, and as I said, my experience going back to I would say the two most difficult 
our closely fought elections were 06 and 08, mm -hmm. We, we were able to manage those those elections. Yes. And I don't think this one is going to be any different. Yeah, I saw the 06 one up front. I, I was fresh out of school and I was right. doing it. Uh, Imani Duncan was the campaign manager for Dr. Davis. Was, was been, yes, right, right. And yes, I, was yes. so I, I saw that process yeah. and I didn't see anything like that. But so those are the issues as reflected. But here's the thing now. This VP race, and for the benefit of those who came in late, Damian Crawford, Dr. Angela Brown Burke, Dr. Wickham McNeil, Dr. Fenton Ferguson, Mikhail Phillips, and Philip Pollard are the six names in the hat for only four positions. While we run up to September 15, which is the big day for the six ladies and gentlemen, the six lady and gentlemen are pictured there in our shot, uh, uh, Mr. Robinson. One of your senior party figures, Peter Bunting, has given persons food for thought because he's saying that, look, effectively these six individuals are fighting for positions, a position that has no real power within the party. And he said, I heard him in the interview on Nationwide this morning, and it was repeated in the midday news of July 24, that effectively it's a waste of time. And if you're not merging the post of regional chairman with that of PNP VP, then it has no real power and he'll be taking steps to make that position official to the party, hoping to influence a change. Well, what Peter has done, Peter has tabled um, a resolution. He tabled it at the NEC in July, mm -hmm. National Executive Council meeting. Yes. The party has established a committee to look at that proposal, plus other forms of um, ensuring that our structure is relevant to the age that we are in, mm -hmm. right? I'm not going to discuss the merits or the demerits of yes. the proposal here, but there's been a broad-based committee that has been put together to examine it in detail and to provide a report by next year because there are far-reaching constitutional changes mm -hmm. if that proposal is to take place. But I certainly wouldn't agree that the VPs don't have power at well, all. His word to describe it was sinecure, a position, no, it, it, I, it's, I it's a no. paper position, no, paper I, power. Not at all. The VPs are given specific responsibilities by the party president. Some of the responsibilities are geographic. So for example, even though you have six regional chairs, a VP has, VPs have been asked to oversee particular regions. Right? So for example, right now, um, Wickham has been asked for Region 5 and 6. Mm -hmm. He's from Region 6. Yes. He works closely with the regional chair. He works closely with the local organization. And I'm using an example. example. Yes, 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 yes. Right? So it doesn't mean that, so each of the, the vice presidents, each of them is given specific responsibilities. Some of them are geographic, like in that case. Mm -hmm. Some of them are sectorial. The, the, the party president may say um, teachers, for example, outside of the opposition spokesman on education, that we need someone to work closely with teachers or nurses or business persons. Yes. So responsibilities can also be that way as well. So I wouldn't agree, even though it's not uh, in the Constitution, you won't find a defined set of responsibilities for them. No, but from, from ever since, and I'm talking about 2003, and it would predate me, the leader always indicates the assignments he gives, he, he or her gives to the VPs, and it puts the VPs in a position to report when they come to NEC meetings on their own assignments yeah. and when they give their annual reports. Mark Golding, speaking at an event in Raytown, raised the very real prospect of disunity settling into the party at a crucial time. I say crucial time because the party has buoyancy in the minds of the mm -hmm. Jamaican public now that it didn't enjoy maybe eight, nine months sure. ago. Agreed. Yes. Agreed. And the, this VP race, he was, without explicitly saying so, buying into the bunting uh, worldview or perspective on the issue of the VP race and saying that, look, this has such a potential to divide us. And one has to ask, Mr. General Secretary, in the days leading up to September 15, with this thing very competitive, some very competitive individuals in here, some big reputations at stake. Isn't there the real possibility that this thing could get nasty and provide yeah. uh, and perhaps cause a distraction within the ranks of a party that is, has been going well over the past three months? Put it this way, we had nominations closed on July 20th, I think. So we have had a month of campaigning. And there was campaigning even before the official nomination. Yes. We have not had, apart from what I would call one or two interventions that we have had to make, mm -hmm. 
knock on wood, I've been pleasantly surprised at how it has gone. It has gone by and large well. People have been on the ground, going to delegates, meeting with delegates, promoting their candidates, speaking positively about their candidates. One or two times we have had to call in people and say, listen, and again, the same social media thing, mm -hmm. this thing that you post or somebody posted on your behalf yes. or a surrogate, yes. take it down. Yes. It's not helpful. But by and large, it's gone well. Now we have another three weeks. And again, I say knock on wood, but yes. I would say so far, I have not had to, I, my previous experiences, we have had to intervene more than where we are today. In a minute before we go to the break, this PNP that six persons are vying for four VP places in, what is this PNP of 2018? What is it? Yes. It's a party which is first committed to good governance. And that's an important thing to say, particularly in the context of what we're seeing with the current government. And we are also going to indicate the things we are going to do to hold ourselves to account. It's not just about um, highlighting the deficiencies of this administration. It's a party which at its heart is committed to social justice, about upliftment of people. And when the party leader speaks on Sunday the 16th and speaks to the covenant and speaks to the policies that we intend to implement, at the core of it is a movement that believes in the upliftment of people and ensuring that there is justice. So I'll give you one example. We are committed to ensuring that people who have been subject to contract work, mm -hmm. as an example, mm -hmm. that we put measures in place to stop that. Yes. And that where you have somebody who is really a full-time employee, that they get the benefits of what a full-time employee should get. Because yes. the issue the country is going to face in, a, um, in 10, 15, 20 years' time, when many of these people retire with no pensions, yes. no benefits, yes. The society and the country is going to have to pick up that cost at some point. Yeah. I just use that as an example, mm -hmm. but there are others. So that is what this PMP is about and what we are committing ourselves to as an administration. All right. Halfway through the program, we're taking another break here. I'm in conversation with the PNP General Secretary, Julian Robinson. Big VP race coming up on September 15. And a big speech set to be made by the party leader the day after September 16. Dr. Peter Phillips as the PNP celebrates 80 years of existence.